Paul Beagler, a manager of Covington Confectioners, receives a news flash that a major hurricane is bearing down on the oil refineries on the Gulf Coast. Beagler believes a shortage of gasoline will increase the demand for ethanol. A major source of ethanol is sugar, particularly in Brazil, the world's largest producer of sugar. The same sugar that is the basic ingredient of Covington's candies. If he has to compete with gasoline refiners, Beagler will pay higher sugar prices in six months. The high prices could hurt his business. Like a time traveler, Beagler wants to go forward six months in time when he thinks sugar will cost more, but buy sugar at today's prices when he believes sugar will cost less. Half a world away in New York City, Fred Mannion is having his first cup of coffee watching the same hurricane that prompted Paul Beagler's dream of time travel. But Mannion sees other news besides the storm, including a report on a possible record cane harvest in two major producing countries. He also reads a report about declining seasonal demand for gasoline. Mannion decides to go to work this morning with the singular purpose of selling sugar contracts. And Mannion works in just the right place to do his bidding. This is the trading floor at the New York Board of Trade, New York's original futures exchange. In this sea of noise and color, crucial economic functions are taking place, and their effects reverberate around the globe. This is a kind of auction where supply meets demand head on, a marketplace where the world negotiates the price of key commodities, cocoa, cotton, coffee, orange juice, sugar, wood pulp, and even the US dollar. But you won't see bags of coffee or bales of cotton on this trading floor. This marketplace specializes in one thing, the price. This market's furious activity does not necessarily end in the actual purchase and sale of goods. What is being bought and sold are futures contracts, agreements to deliver or take delivery of a commodity or its cash equivalent at a predetermined time, which then ends or expires the contract. The legal specifications for delivery time, location, quantity, and quality are identical for each transaction. Since everyone knows exactly what is being traded, and when the contract expires, price remains the only variable. The presence of the physical commodity in the contract, however, gives the price validity. In addition to price discovery, there are two remaining functions of the Nibot marketplace price risk transfer, a kind of price protection, and price dissemination, a kind of global news network. If our world was happy, safe, and unchanging, price discovery might be the only service the exchange need provide. But our world is constantly changing. Hurricanes, earthquakes, and civil strife create risks which drastically affect prices. The presence of risk makes exchanges like Nibot necessary in a global economy. Since many members of the market are willing to pay someone to assume their risk, and since there are roughly an equal number of individuals willing to accept some risks that offer profit opportunity, the market naturally provides a means for these two groups to satisfy their mutual desires within a strict system that is fair, transparent, and guaranteed safe and secure. The exchange has sophisticated systems that record and send out these real-time prices from the trading floor in Lower Manhattan all around the world in seconds. Equal access to this price information helps to give all market participants equal footing in the price competition. The three functions of the exchange rely on two basic instruments, futures and options on futures, to separate the risk element from any commodity and allow that risk to be reassigned. This process of risk transfer is called hedging. By hedging, a business can lock in today's prices to meet tomorrow's goals, regardless of any change in the world which affects price. So how does commodities hedging work? Let's examine the anatomy of a trade in the sugar market, for example. By 10 a.m., Paul Beagler has decided that he needs to hedge the cost of his sugar at least six months into the future. 
an experienced risk manager, Paul will check Nibot's reliable sources of information, such as real-time market data direct from the Nibot trading floor via the web on nibotlive.com. He may even use some of the technical tools available on the site to chart and analyze the sugar futures price history. Then he might turn to market commentary and research reports on nibot.com. High quality information is important to his hedging plan. At 10.05 New York time, Paul phones his account executive, or AE, at his brokerage firm, and after asking a few questions about the market, he puts in an order for 10 May 06 Sugar Number no. 11 contracts. That's 10 contracts, each for 112,000 pounds of raw sugar that expire in May of 2006. If sugar is trading at 11 cents a pound, each contract would be worth $12,320. Buy 10 May. Thank you. After Beagler dictates the order, the AE generally timestamps the order ticket upon receipt from the client. The ticket will specify all relevant information, such as the quantity of contracts, the name of the commodity, the contract month and year, how long the order to buy will be in effect, or should it be canceled at the end of the trading day, what limit, if any, should be placed on the price, or is the trade done at the market, and finally, the customer's account number. The AE then phones the order to a representative of a member firm on the trading floor, called a floor broker. These Nibot representatives use booths that surround the trading rings. Each booth has a sophisticated phone system and electronic access to all necessary information. Paul Beegler's order has now reached the Nibot floor, one of the most strictly organized and regulated markets in the world. See those folks in the gray jackets? They are members of the Nibot Compliance Department, and they continuously monitor the trading floor from every angle. The exchange enforces a strict set of trading rules and regulations so that all participants can have absolute confidence in the market's integrity. Whenever a phone order is received, the clerk is required by Nibot to timestamp the order ticket upon receipt of the order. The timestamp serves as the first part of an audit trail that documents each step in the trading process. This documentation verifies and ensures to the customer that the order fill was made at the best available price according to the customer's order instructions. By 10.30 New York time, the order is received and recorded. It is now conveyed to the broker in the pit, either verbally, by hand signals, by physically handing the order to the pit broker, or by sending it in via runner. The executing brokers generally work from the top step of the ring, close to their booth in order to receive orders quickly and accurately. Once received, the order becomes a part of the broker's book, a running list of orders for which the broker assumes responsibility for negotiating the best price. Because the Nibot markets are open outcry trading, the broker calls out asking for what the current market is for May. Other brokers in the pit, either floor brokers who are trading for the customer, or locals like Fred Mannion, who are trading for their own accounts, will indicate their desires. If a broker is willing to buy, Mannion signals the price he's willing to sell. This is done by using the hand signal for an offer. The difference in their offers constitutes the range of price. The difference between the buy and the sell price a range that is quickly seen and adjusted by the counterbids and offers of other traders in the pit. Catching the eye of Beegler's broker, Mannion makes an offer that is the highest of any other broker in the pit. Beegler's broker finds this agreeable, and the deal is closed. By exchange rules, Beegler's broker must execute the order at the most competitive price, provided it meets the conditions specified by the order. This is all done openly and out loud so that all participants hear whatever business is being transacted. While this trading is taking place, exchange employees with handheld devices punch in the prices traded. This data is sent out electronically to price vendors around the world. It serves as a critical part of price discovery. Real-time data is a necessary tool for anyone trading futures and options. This information is available directly on the internet through Nibot's own real-time streaming data service at nibotlive.com and through third-party vendors.
In addition to futures contracts, the exchange also provides markets for the trading of options. An option on a futures contract entitles the buyer or holder of the option the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a specified futures contract. The right to buy is known as a call, and it allows you to buy or call the contract at a specific price, which is called the strike price. The right to sell the futures contract is called a put, and it allows you to sell or put the contract to someone at the strike price. The cost of an option is a small fraction of the cost of a futures contract, so options provide great flexibility and do not require a margin deposit. The option's price includes a small premium, determined by the probability that the option will be exercised. These premiums are negotiated in the ring via open outcry, just like prices are negotiated in the futures pit next door. Returning now to the futures pit, where the order has been filled, the broker now hands off the tip and calls the fill to the clerk or runner. When the order returns to the clerk in the booth, another timestamp is required. Then the clerk confirms the order with the originating account executive, or AE. Once the AE receives notice of the order fill, his client Paul Beegler is notified. Are you? We have your fill uh, at 11. Ah, thanks, Alan. Beegler, in collaboration with the broker, now has the responsibility for monitoring that position. Across the trading floor, Fred Mannion, now having sold enough sugar futures to satisfy his speculative hunger, takes a break and checks with his clerk on some market information he needs. But what happens to that trade after execution? The trade processing system, called TIPS, is another crucial part of the trading process. Every half hour during the trading session, the floor broker is required to place his trading cards in strategically placed bins. The cards show all the executed trades for that half hour, include all relevant information, such as the quantity and month of the commodity, as well as the opposing broker with whom the trade was made. The cards are promptly retrieved by exchange employees and are transported by clerks who manually enter them into the TIPS system. Each floor broker's booth can access the TIPS screen, enabling the broker's clerk to confirm that all executions went into the system properly. If a particular execution doesn't appear on the screen, then the clerk will contact the opposing broker's clerk to determine if there was a problem with the trade. As a final level of security, all trades are then matched and cleared by the exchange's clearinghouse, the New York Clearing Corporation. New York clearing. The Clearing Corporation assumes the opposite side to every transaction. Becoming the buyer to every seller and the seller to every buyer, the clearinghouse therefore guarantees every trade. To do this, the Clearing Corporation has to balance the accounts of each of its members at the end of each business day to reflect that day's trading. All accounts are adjusted with gains and losses immediately recorded. Then, bright and early next morning, Paul Beegler sees that the hurricane was not as bad as he originally thought. He decides to quickly adjust his position of the day before. Harold! Yeah, Paul. Now he contacts his broker by phone to act with maximum haste. He's gonna need to do some options. This time by using options contracts instead of futures. We have some make calls for you. It starts all over again. This time when Beegler's broker gets the call, he decides to use Nibot's EOR system. What is it? To root Beegler's urgent hedge order. The Nibot provides market users an enhanced means of order routing. The electronic order routing system, where a customer can enter an order on screen and send it via the internet to the booth or to the order book management system, OBMS, on a broker's handheld unit in the ring. The broker can now attempt to fill the order via open outcry. Later, when the new order is filled, the broker records the fill through EOR, which enters the trade into tips and the clearing system simultaneously, while sending confirmation back to the client. Paul Beegler now has his hedge in record time, thanks to EOR faultlessly providing him reliability, integrity, and security. The three pillars of the historic marketplace, the New York Board of Trade. 
tools of the trade have been enhanced over the years, while some participants feel that computerized trading will one day replace open outcry trading, the purpose of each is to provide the best possible service to NIBOT's diverse global clientele. While many prefer the speed and efficiency of online trading, others appreciate the added value of personal contact, deep liquidity, and the quality of price discovery in the open outcry environment. Either way, the focus of NIBOT remains the same. Maintaining the excellence and immediacy of the price while providing the highest level of customer service.